so far still really, really good players. And uh, it's uh, not going to be easy for the Dutch guys, but I think like they are just too straight and too good. It's the second time that we have seen Yuval qualify for a World Championship. He was in the, uh, the World Championship last year, he didn't get grouped. And had to go the long way around, Case, didn't he, to come back through, he went through the play-ins. That he did. Only two players have made it this far from the play-in. Sharif just played last round and Yuval Belly as well. I think a lot of times if you're going through the play-ins, you're seen as an underdog. But these two players, they haven't been playing like that. They've been really, really impressive to watch, even making it out of the groups into the knockouts. And so I've really enjoyed watching Yuval Belly's journey because he beat Nicholas twice, which is absolutely insane. He certainly did in that difficult group that he found himself in, in Group B, early corner, defended well by Canato. It was the League of Portugal that was his FC Pro partnered league group that did allow him to come to the play-ins. It was FC Famalicão, which he did win that league. Oliver and Hami Alvarez did play in that league as well. And he told us a lot about how impressive Yuval and Ricard were this year. The duo represented that Portuguese league club. Someone else who had to go through an FC Pro Part League to get his ticket here was the defending world champion in Manu Bashore. Could be a pretty early start. So it's taken him six and a half minutes to pick up where he left off yesterday with it. Just a great call from Manu. I think like um, he just faked the uh, step over. I think Yuval is faked here the step over. He just uh, cut it, cut it his way and uh, just passed to R9. R9 clean uh, finish into the short corner. Amazing goal. The point I was trying to make, Case, is that at the start of the year, he got an invite to the FC Pro Open from how good he was. Of course, he was the world champion. He deserved an auto invite through. And he came through with so much pressure on his shoulders back in London earlier on this year, and he didn't deliver. Yeah, he had a rough start to the year, Manu did. And I think it just took him a little while to get his footing and get back into the season because as soon as he got it, it all clicked and then he continued to win throughout the entire season. But the beginning, it was a little bit messy. We saw that a lot of those players that did really, really well last year, it didn't quite translate in the beginning of the year. But we're seeing a different Manu than we did in, say, November, December, January. Absolutely. He certainly has found his form as the season's gone on. He'll, of course, have wanted to win a few trophies. He was a runner-up in the E Divise this year, losing to PA and Levy de Vier of Ajax. And when you're surrounded by that team Hullet camp of just winners who were constantly after trophies and new heights and new levels of career earnings as you saw in the build up there hundreds of thousands of dollars these players have earned they'll be potentially hundreds of thousands more if they perform well over the next two days here in Berlin you just saw a kick off there as well between Emre Yilmaz and Gabao so could be in for an equaliser here he may have got 1-0 down in seven minutes but nine minute halves it's a long old game and as you were saying Case, this is a player that stopped Nicholas from getting through. Absolutely. Yuval Belly is definitely not coming into this afraid at, at all, as he has Davies into Ronaldinho. He makes it look easy. Very, very quick passes in the box. He had a few opportunities there, but he did choose to finish it with Ronaldinho, and he is uh, making it level. We can. Let's jump across to more of the game. The low down of what's going on there. I believe it is still goalless between the two players. It's kicked off slightly later so we can catch both winning moments. That's Gabaros who... And you've played in a couple of tournaments with him. I, mean, I don't know how many times you've had the, the chance to play up against him, but I think we were speaking backstage. He potentially could be like one of the rookies of the year. The Brazilian player was run up in the pond of the Libertadores, losing to the hands of Nathan Sr, who just got eliminated. So that's Cherif in that last game you just saw. What have you made of his season of it? Because he has been a bit of a surprise package. Yeah, like, to be honest, uh, before that season, uh, I didn't even know him. But uh, now he's so good. And I also played uh, some games, uh, games against him in some tournaments. He's just so good in attack. Like, he's he's really, really good. And I think he's one of the groups of the year. And we've seen him quite a lot, Case, in different tournaments this year. One thing that he loves is the skill. He's a very flary player in the final third, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's one of those players that you really do enjoy watching. Very, very attacking. Kind of a relentless player, but very creative in the attack as well. I had the pleasure of going to Sao Paulo for Libertadores, and so I got to see it live. And yeah, watching him amongst his coach as well, his celebrations are always very fun. He brings the passion, he brings the joy, and I'm just happy that he made it to the stage so we can continue to see more. Speaking of Kabaras, let's see him in action now. Come a step over from Kahab versus he tries to break in through the lines. He goes for a finesse. 
You heard Richard and Ramerson speak about the top of the show a little bit. There's a, a real lack of aerial plus in this team from Emre Yilmaz. Is it a case of, look, that's just not how I want to play, but is he also at risk of maybe losing out on what the current meta is? Yes, but to be honest, I don't know why, but I see Rico's on the pitch. Oh, he's, I'll take it back, he's been so wrong. Chance right up from distance, he just goes wide. Well, it looks like there is some aerial plus in the team. Completely gone against it. But I also think like you just need someone in the team with aerial plus um, as a striker just to have the option to cross. I think it's really hard to defend if you just have the option and of course like for corners or something else. We, we've seen many corner goals this weekend, so I think like it's um, really necessary that we lose some of them. Here he comes, Emre Yilmaz. Gives himself a corner, one thing you can guarantee from every single team and player. They are electric from corners, they are... Always in boot camp, always practicing the latest set piece maneuvers. And as the game will update, they will just be on it. I mean, you, you see it from their socials as well, Case. They're always finding the new meta, the new formation, the new skill move, the new play style, the player that offered you the most in the final third. We'll talk more on that in just a second. Power shot was an idea, but not, I guess, in a way. Yes, I mean, it is really interesting because a lot of these players provide a lot of great insight on social media. I even go sometimes to the Team Bullet page to learn a lot of the different new meta formations, tactics, that sort of thing. And so they're always trying something new because the game is constantly evolving and that sort of thing. Which actually, oh my question for you. Yeah. He may not have started off with White Horse on the team, but how often is it that you are changing players going into the different stages of the game? Is it, a lot, is it happen a lot or do you stick with that starting 11 for the most part for the entirety of the competition? I like to stick uh, with my team, like, Emre has played yesterday so good. I mean, he, he beat Johnny 6-1, he went 2-0, so I think, like, I'm gonna, I would just stay, but if you have a match plan, like, uh, it's smart to change also, like, in some, in some situations, uh, I think it's also smart, so, yeah, like, I wouldn't change, he changed, so, let's see. He went to corner, he just... Sort of power shot they did eventually go for one with Erling Haaland. This is Cabarros looking to make the most of the aerial plus from this corner. It's going to go into Haaland. Canate walks off of that aerial plus and sometimes can be in the way to stop him. Can it be for a second time? Havertz was at the back post. He was just about stopped in his track. So if you're at the World Championship and, and you're in the stage where you're building your team, there's 32 players building their team. Do you ever? Obviously, we're looking at identical teams here. At least nine or ten players in each team is the same. Are you peeping around corners and looking at other players' teams, or is it always just back in what you know? I think, like... But do people pop round Anders' screen and say, oh, what's, what, should I play Hostel at right back? Yeah, like, I think... We've got the rebound very quickly. You just have to think, like, um, you have to be really confident with your team. I think it's also important that you like the players uh, with your playing who uh, are. So I think if I just hate the player in real life, I will not play him. Also, if he's good, I, in my mind, he's just bad, and I will. I don't like to play with him. So I think you also have to play some players that you like, so you can uh, just enjoy it. How much time do you spend preparing your team and choosing it before you have the deadline? Mm, I think it's more like uh, I just played a whole day. Whole so day. Um, yeah, I played just like uh, 10 hours per day. Not to find my team, also to find my team, but still like to just um, be ready for the tournament, to just play really good because I think, of course, the team is important, but I think uh, how you play is more important. We just had an update in that game. Adam Ishore, 2 1, he leads now. I forget to you for that one, that's just got into a pause. Goalless in this one. What's more crazy is if both Anna and Emre were to win this, they would be matching up against each other in the quarter finals. It's safe to say the brackets not be nice to them two. Two teammates this year in the Edevise, outside of the Edevise. I think they also played in the E Champions League against each other for the top four. They're probably, get, probably getting sick of it, aren't they? Yeah, Emre won, I think. But Mano got a penalty in the like 90th minute and Emre just read it. It's a crazy match. Big chance. Cabarrus wants to save from Schmeichel. Is Haaland onside? No, he's not. Of course, look at your questions in at home in the chat as well. We have got Uma here. 2022 world champion. He had the, uh, the nerves to win a $250,000 penalty shootout in the grand final. 
sure he's got plenty of insight for you if you're looking to improve your team or your weekend league record. This coming weekend, get your questions in. Maldini. Interesting choice there at the back. I mean, it's not off the tip of everyone's tongue, Cass. Yeah, I think we see a lot of the same players in terms of a back line for this competition, but there's a few outliers here and there. Everyone has their own preferences in terms of height, play styles, and it will it'll change from a couple players to another, but for the most part, we see mostly the same players. I think you, like, you need Van Dijk. He's just too good on the ground. I think you just need him as a center back. Papanucci, oh, he's played a few times. I think I, I, would, he's left. <laughs> I would only play him because he's playing for Fener, but I think there's uh, no other reason to play him. Still goalless in this one. It's probably been the game that's been the least goal scored in the round of 16 here. As we said, 16 players turned up today. Only eight will return tomorrow for our big round final day here live in Berlin. Actually, if you are in the area, Tickets are still available to head down. See us prouder, an FC Pro world champion. Tomorrow evening, comes the breakaway, Croy. Passes a bit weak, but Zidane will pick up the pieces. Last chance, potentially the half. Oh, no, down that ball, and lost it, and you know where that's going to end up, Harland. Oh. It was just, it felt like the ball was never coming down. Half time, goalless between them two, but I'll tell you what, the Barros has given Emre Yilmaz a proper good game here so far. Emre Yilmaz hasn't really been able to get going. Yeah, I think I'm actually pretty surprised by the fact that there have been no goals in that game. I probably was expecting to see at least a goal before halftime from Emre here, but Guy Barros is giving him a very, very good match. It is interesting, though, as I see the two of them on their player camps. On one hand, we have one player that has a lot of celebrations, a lot of passion. On the other hand, Emre doesn't really give us a lot of emotions on it. And so, what do you prefer there? The emotions, the celebrating, or the calm, cool, collected type of player of Emre Gomez? I think uh, it depends on the player. I think I I'm just uh, more calm. Like, uh, I just uh, like to stay focused. Uh, if you scream uh, on every goal, maybe you're out of focus. But uh, there are also some players like Anders. Uh, who love to celebrate, who love to, to push themselves. They are motivating, uh, motivating themselves for, um, for, for the celebrating. So, yeah, so maybe Guevara is someone that needs to celebrate and uh, need to push herself. We need to see a few goals first for those celebrations to come in. <laughs> a few people that have been celebrating here is our live crowd here in Berlin. And I believe Ibru is catching up with some of the fans that have been joining the action today. Thank you very much, Brandon. Yeah, it's the first day of the final where we have a crowd here. So I would say, uh, let's check out. So what's your name and uh, where are you from? Uh, I'm Hisham and I'm from Berlin. Yeah, from Berlin, from Germany. Yeah, I'm from Berlin. Yeah, great. Um, are you a supporter of someone, like a fan, or are you just here for fun? Yeah, I supported Johnny, but uh, he got eliminated in the first round. Sad for me, but uh, I'm still enjoying the games. Ah, great. Okay, so yeah, Johnny is out. Is there someone you support still? or? Um, now I would love to see Anders uh, hold the trophy because he's such a nice player. I love his yeah. games, high pressure, uh, a little bit toxic, but I love it. Okay, then um, last question: Who's going to win the World Cup? Anders. Okay. <laughs> then, okay. Thank you very much. Then I would say let's go back to the castles. Thank you very much, Ibru. Again, that could be you tomorrow here live in Berlin. Tickets still available for the final day. Someone will be picking up $250,000. I love that fan of the crowd. He said, look, I support Johnny. Who did Johnny lose to? Anders. Now I'm going to support Anders. And I think Anders is going to go and win the whole thing. Back on the way for the second half. Goal is still in this one. Emre Yulmaz Gabaros. And Manny Bishore leading 2-1 against Juve. And this idea with the reversal has to go there. Needed Tony Cruz to come back and just help out. Alfonso Davies. Just continued his run. This is Copper America in game time. It's got plenty of pace and dribbling on it. To Dan Cruz can turn. Oh no, a big chance. Can he? Oh, he tried just to get round the, the goalie. I don't think we're coming back for a penalty. No, we're not. We're going back for a free kick instead. This could be dangerous. Well, I break short of it, surely. Yeah, for sure. I think it's a good position to shoot. Emmy just tries to, to get a player on the line. But uh, you see. Let's have a look. So he's trying to move the keeper. Cruz over it. Canate's on the line as well. 
Taking his time on this one, Gavras. Has he taken too long with it, though? Shot comes in! Saved on the bar! It's still not fully dealt with. Oh, no, it goes down to ground. Referee doesn't say that's a penalty. It's a terrible touch from Van Dijk. Somehow there's a Vantage played on that. Finesse comes in! Well, I'm not sure what's happened there in the last 10 in game seconds, but it was a right mess at the back. Free kick wise with it though, was that the right decision? Yeah, I think that's so. That's shooting but... technique. Ooh. I think Schmeichel's got away with that one. I think that's how we all feel, right there. Back straight down the over and Emre Yulman's looking to make the most of that, cuts it back! Yeah! <laughs> If you don't take your chances against him, he will punish you all day long. It was only a matter of time before Emre Yilmaz was going to wake up. And unfortunately, he's just woken up and he's just started scoring. Back over to this one, we've got a replay, we've got an equaliser, Yuval Belly is playing a superb tournament case. He really is. I think that coming into this round, a lot of players were hyping up the Hullet boys, but you cannot count out their opponents because they have fought very, very hard to get into these spots. And Yuval Belly, he is coming out here ready to compete. He said, I don't even care if he's the previous world champion. He is out here ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the previous champ, and he has made it level. And I'm actually I'm excited to get back to that game eventually because I think it is about to turn up. Should have a chance to come through. We asked for your questions at home. FPL champ comes in. Who's impressed you the most so far in this tournament? Bummit. I think uh, probably Sharif, because he's uh, coming from play -ins. Uh, He's the first uh, Moroccan who ever competed in the uh, Super World Champs. So I think now now he's in the top eight. So I think like he's the player who impressed me the most. Another question coming in from Buzzy B. I mean, I'd always say this would be Germany in terms of the, the nation with the best players, but in your opinion, what country do you think has the best FC players at the moment? Maybe the Netherlands? Yeah, I, have to, I think you have to go with the Netherlands. They're just like uh, four players in the knockout, and um, like no of them is out, so I think, yeah, you have to say Netherlands. I'm really curious here because only one goal has fallen in this game. I was wondering if this is going to give everyone a little bit of momentum going into this one. It looks like it might. Let's go! Never oh. yield that's five to seconds. Unfortunately, though, his teammate is in a difficult scenario as well. We have a few Dutch fans in the crowd here in Berlin. What do we say? There's only so long before. Emre Yilmaz will turn it on. He's one of those players where you can clearly see that's Coach Jelle behind him. He doesn't give off any reactions, does he? He doesn't really give off any emotion. He needs someone behind him that is just roaring him up. Yeah, I think that's just the type of player he is. Even when he wins, even when he wins entire tournaments, he's not the one to celebrate, be in your face with those celebrations, be dramatic. And here we have another goal here from Yuval Belly against the world champion Omit. Did you expect this? Uh, no, I didn't expect that. Yuval is, of course, really good, but you have to say this goal was really lucky for Yuval. I think my manager did everything uh, right, but Yuval was uh, just lucky in this case. Like, uh, this again, it was also a little bit lucky, this rebound, uh, but Manuel managed uh, to defend that. So we have a good game here. As we said, the headline news could be the current world champion could be eliminated in the round of 16, which would allow for a new name go down in history here in the FC Pro scene. Still plenty of time left, though. He works that one pretty well. Bellingham, he's not going to be the player to shoot. Either is Tony Cruz, Arno would have been. Oh, but Kai Havertz, he can do enough. How big was that pressure, Amir? You know, you've won the World Championship, you're coming back into the new season. The expectation, there must be an you're going into games and the players that are playing you have got an extra 10, 15, 20% to beat you so they can go on off and say, look, I've knocked out the world champion, I've beat the world champion. Yeah, I think it's a crazy pressure because you just have to win every game. Everyone is expecting you win every game and everyone is try-harding like 20 times more. If you're just playing a division rivals or weekend league, just normal mode against anyone, like everyone is sweating. Oh, you've out. He's going to take that all day long. Is this
I'm not sure how the ball's popped up there. I'd love to see that get on the replay case, just to try and understand. Yeah, Sam, because it seems like two goals in a row that Manu are, is not going to be very happy about. Quite unlucky situation. Saka, step over. He got bumped there. He still kept possession. It drops down perfectly for Saka, just for him to dink it right in. Almost a perfect situation. You said the word lucky on the last goal, wasn't it? I've got a feeling you might, you might say that again. Yeah, really lucky goal. I think he, he should have the ball first with Konate. Then um, the keeper's uh, just throwing it away. And, uh, like, his R9 is not even winning the header, but I don't know how the ball gets to him. Well... Back to this one, 23 minutes left. Emre Yilmaz is cruising at the moment. After such a dominant first half from Gubaros case, and he doesn't have anything to show for it now. He really doesn't. He's one of the more creative players out here. He's one of those players that goes all out attack, and you haven't really seen that. It seems like he's playing back a little bit against Emre, which I understand because sometimes you can't play the same exact way that you would in your own league that we saw in Sao Paulo. But Havertz, Harlan oh, Bosselu oh. with the back of his head. has just become not just a striker, but a defender. Another wave of pressure coming straight back in. Croy for Aldinho, something's got to stick down for Gabarros, deflection. Can Arlen just about keep it in? It looks like he would go up for a corner, if not. Does not want the corner? Instead, we'll play on and just recycle it back across the midfield line. And just kick back off as well from a pause. 19 minutes left in that one. Yuval Belly looking to knock out the current world champ. He's 4-2 up against Manu at the moment. Let's jump back to it. Big chance. Some of them they've been so good at all the Dutch players. These areas, these set pieces. It's not going to work that time. Is it back for a free kick? I mean, it would just be another twist in the tail here in Berlin, case. I mean, look, all the, the household names you can argue potentially just being knocked out in early stages, and you would have expected them to be. Yeah, here's the thing. It is upset City in this tournament right now. Expect the unexpected. The biggest names in this tournament, we've already said goodbye to so many of them, and it just continues to happen. And so I'm here for it because we might see some of these unexpected players making it to the massive stages of the game. As it stands, two players from the play-ins are going through to the quarterfinals, which a lot of people would not have anticipated. I think I also, I, I didn't expect that. But, uh, yeah, it's also like Yuval is also really, really good. Of course, he's playing against Manu, who was the favorite in this game, but, like, uh, still Yuval is just a really, really good player. He's playing crazy in the attack. He's playing fearless as well. You have to remember that he's one of the players that came through the play-ins. He wasn't just offered an FC Pro World Championship ticket. He had to come a day early, play against 19 other players that came through different FC Pro partner leagues around the world was able to get out of his group, and then, from that point, you restart again, don't you, in the group stages, and he was pulled into the group with Nicholas. It was not an easy journey for him here, nor any of them, for that matter, but I almost wonder, do all of those matches the day before you're ready to compete in the biggest competition of your life, does that give you the warm-up that you need? You're no longer coming to Berlin, flying from across the world and coming in cold? I'm not sure what you think. Do you think having a tournament, a tournament ahead of time gets you ready for it? Mindset, you're ready in the lights, you're already sitting there, ready for it, or would you just want to show up and play? I think it's also like helping uh, Yuval like that he had played before, but uh, yeah, after, after his uh, win against Nicolas twice, so I think he can be confident, and I think he is confident um, to, to just play his, um, yeah, how, how he wants to play. I think uh, he has been also, the, the last year's really, really good, but uh, he didn't show that on the big stage. And now uh, he's showing that he's one of the best players. Well, let's jump back into it now. The headline news could be the current world champion could be eliminated in 11 minutes in game time. <laughs> Has to turn it around now. If you're in this situation a bit, and you're trying to break down these last 10 in-game minutes, when do you need your first goal by? 85th? 85th is okay. I think at least 88 because we've seen here six goals. So I would say maybe two or three minutes um, overtime. Like you just need to, to score late point 88. Otherwise, you will not see the ball again. 
Well, on the other side for Juve, what's he got to do? He's got to manage a long 10 in game minutes. Remember, this is nine and a half, so it's a long 10 minutes. He doesn't just float past us. Maybe it would have been six minutes. Another goal certainly would be the right way to go about it. Oh, no, not the finish! Oh, yes! oh, 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 oh! The double twist in the tail here in Berlin! But it looks like the current defending world champion is about to be eliminated in the round of 16. As we saw the replay there with R9. Yes. Here's the thing, Juve could, could have sat back, just tried to dominate possession, which is very hard to do for 10 minutes straight, but he continued to push forward. He's kind of relentless right now because at any point it could turn the tides. 10 minutes could take a very, very long time, but I respect it because he could have sat back and tried to make sure that he doesn't see the ball in this situation, but I mean, more goals the better for the viewers. Aggressive press. Three goals now needed. That pass, it goes astray. And for you, though, now we can start just seeing that clock tick down and look back on what performance this was of it. Yeah, like, you were playing just good. He's just playing good. Um, I'm a little bit sad also for Romano because he was playing such a great tournament and he was one of my favorites, to be honest. But um, yeah, in this match, yeah, I wouldn't even say that uh, Juve played uh, much better. But in uh, some cases, uh, Manu was uh, just a little bit unlucky, to be honest. Where about Yilmaz has made three World Championships in a row, and he's about to make the top eight again. Crazy consistency. I mean, uh, we mention every time Emre's uh, attack and his press, uh, pressure, and how he is good in attacking. But we've seen here against Guibaras. Zero um, goals he conceded, and I mean yesterday against Johnny, he also conceded just one goal. So in the defense, he's also really, really good uh, this tournament. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I want to see more from him. And in time for two minutes, commiserations, Gavaris. What a run you've had this year for me. Certainly up in the conversation of Rookie of the Year. But it will be Emre Yulmaz that goes on through to the quarterfinal, and he takes on the winner of this game, which many would have predicted. Would have been a rematch again between his teammate and PSV Eindhoven of Team Hullet. But that's not going to be the case. The defending world champion will not be able to go back to back, unfortunately. And the end of his road will be at the, the round of 16 here in Berlin. Controller down. He knows his game over. Commiserations to Manu. Congratulations to Yuval. The playing run of dreams. He remains the fight another day. Top eight guarantees. What a different performance from him. He was grouped last year in the World Championships. All that learning potentially you could argue a bit. He's come back and he's brought a, a very different performance here. Yeah, I think Yuval is a very great player. He's so, so good. But he, as I said, he never showed it offline. He was just playing really good online. And now uh, he's playing also really good online. And uh, yeah, he's, uh, he deserved the win and uh, he's uh, deserved to be in the top eight uh, of the FC Pro World Championship.